Hi, and thank you so much for joining us again on this week's Chesapeake Treasure, a feature here live at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum where we're going to give you the opportunity to look in some of our fantastic collections and see some of our favorite objects, many of which are not currently on display. Um, so those of you who turn, tuned in last week would have seen some of our oyster plates, but this week I wanted to choose something that um, it's, a, it's a part of, of Chesapeake history that not a lot of people know about. Um, this is a poster, really one of my favorite objects from the collection of the James Adams Floating Theater. And I want you to think about the turn of the century in the Chesapeake. Before the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, the bay was actually a pretty isolating place to live. Um, there wasn't a lot of easy transportation across the bay unless it was by boat. And so that was true for entertainment as well. You had a lot of these small Chesapeake communities that n might not necessarily have had an opera house or a place where people could go to see entertainment. So um, an entrepreneur, James Adams, and his sister, Beulah Adams, founded the uh, what would be called the James Adams Floating Theater. Um, he was a vaudevillian, um, and he was a traveling carnival entertainer, and his sister, Beulah, played the ingenue. They actually commissioned this boat, the James Adams Floating Theater, and it was built so that it could go into the small little river towns along the Chesapeake and provide entertainment. Um, inside the James Adams Floating Theater, they had a really large stage. They had an orchestra pit that could hold 10 instruments. It could hold um, six uh, members of a band. They had accommodations for the entertainers as well. Um, and these uh, uh, posters were used um, to advertise the coming of the James Adams Floating Theater a few weeks in advance to get people really excited. Um, this was a, a great example of, of vaudeville. Um, in a time period before movies or moving pictures, um, this was the type of entertainment that you'd get maybe once a year. So this was a big deal and people got really excited about this. And as you can see, you know, this poster is really meant to drum up people's expectations, get them excited and maybe starting to save some of their pocket change so that they could pay to get inside to see some of the shows. Um, this was not something that was necessarily unknown in the world. Um, there were lots of other floating theaters, most of them on the Mississippi, um, but this particular floating theater w became really important because of who it inspired. So a writer in the 1920s, Edna Ferber, heard about the James Adams Floating Theater and was intrigued. And in 1926, she, she came down during the summer to Crumpton, um, a small town on, on the eastern shore of Maryland, and actually uh, lived on board for two weeks gathering material for a book that she would later write called Showboat. And that book was the inspiration for Roger Hammerstein's immortal um, musical Showboat that would come out later. Now that book, that Showboat in, in Showboat, if you've ever seen it, that takes it takes place really down south, but really she was documenting a lot of the uh, discrimination and inequalities that she observed while she was on board the floating theater. So this is a really interesting piece of history that not a, a lot of people are aware of because now movies have taken the place of this type of entertainment or even online features like this. So thank you so much. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about another object in our collection. Um, again, please join us next week, next Friday. We're going to be doing another feature on another fascinating object here at Chesapeake Treasure. Um, and thanks so much. And if you have any questions or want to know more about objects like this, you can contact us at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. Thanks. Have a great afternoon.